So let's grab that uh, function that I coded previously. Um, so if I scroll down into my notepad++ file, I'm just going to grab that function. And I'm going to paste that in here, and then I'll explain what this does. Okay, so our drive with joysticks function, uh, you can see it takes in as an argument uh, an Xbox controller. We're going to program that in a little while, but um, for right now, it just needs that library. So I'm going to just do that quick fix, import Xbox controller. We have that, and then we can see I have called that differential drive. So this class has a method in it called arcade drive. And so I was just able to access that method just with dot syntax. So if I was to type this just like this, you can see that it gives me all the methods um, and also um, variables and stuff that are in um, that differential drive that we need there. And the one we want is arcade drive. So that's what I did previously as I grabbed that arcade drive. Now it takes a couple arguments. The first argument is kind of like a forward back argument and I've set that to the y-axis and then the second argument is a rotational argument uh, and you could see that actually if you even looked in the documentation now I also have this other variable that I've added as an argument up here this is a speed variable uh, you can just set this to a value between um, 0 and 1 and then you can kind of tune your speed of your robot uh, so that's kind of what we're going to do there we'll have a variable stored in our constants for that um, eventually as well um, but we'll call that from within the, the, the actual command. So we have here constants, Xbox, left, Y axis. So I have um, a constant I haven't created yet. And so we've seen this before. So I can click on quick fix, uh, create constant, Xbox, Y axis. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, hit the quick fix, create that constant, uh, X axis. Now, um, what how do I know um, what axis number that is going to be? So if I look in constants right now, uh, it created those constants, but it set the, ax the y axis to zero and x axis to zero. So that can't be right. Um, so you're probably thinking, well, how the heck do I find out um, which axis number is the left y axis on an Xbox controller? Well, the easiest way to do that is likely go to your drive station. So I'm just going to minimize here for a second. I'm going to open up the FRC drive. And I have a controller plugged in to my USB. And so I'm going to kind of go down to this little icon. Uh, well, we've got the smart dashboard open up as well. Uh, but you can see the drive station here. We have this little USB kind of icon down here. Uh, and you can see I have a controller plugged into uh, port zero. But I also can tell here uh, if I play with the, the actually left stick, and I'm getting movement. When I go up and down, you can see that Y axis is actually axis number one if I look closely here. And then if I go left to right, okay, that's obviously the X axis, and so that's zero. So I wanna set those values inside my constants to exactly that. So I'm just gonna pop into here, and I think I said Y was gonna be one, and x is 0, just double check that, y is definitely 1, and x, I know, is 0. Okay, good to go. Okay, so those are programmed to the proper axis. Now, uh, back to my drivetrain code. So I have my drive with joysticks method. I'm going to create a matching, um, we're going to create a matching uh, command that's going to control basically the life cycle of this drive with joystick sticks um, function. So that's kind of the basis of this command-based system. Basically, we can declare any kind of functions or anything that our subsystem would do um, in methods inside that subsystem, and then we kind of control their life cycle inside of a separate command that targets that. It's not always the case, but for the most part, that's kind of the way the command-based system works. So um, before we add any other methods here, actually, let's just add the other two methods. We have two other methods that we're going to add. We're going to have a drive forward method that we're going to add, and we're going to use that um, just to do a, a timed drive forward, so drive forward straight for kind of a few seconds or whatever. Uh, maybe we're a rookie team, and we just need to cross a line to get some autonomous points 
Um, so we're going to make a command for that, and we'll set that to autonomous in a bit. Um, uh, in a future video, hopefully I can show you guys uh, command groups and how to do kind of a more uh, complex uh, autonomous mode. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Um, and so we'll, we'll add these other functions, and then we just have a stop uh, method as well. And the stop method is just going to um, stop our kind of motor controllers. So let's grab those. Um, they're sitting right here, and then that'll be all that we're going to actually put inside this subsystem. Copy, and back into here. And you can see these are going to be fairly straightforward. Our drive forward, we're actually going to use the tank drive, okay? So we can, if you think of a tank drive system, you got kind of two treads. Well, you got two sides to control. Uh, and we're not going to have treads, we're just going to have wheels. But we're going to set that speed to the same speed. So we're going to give it a speed and then it's going to go at that same same speed on both sides and so we'll go forward um, we're also going to have this kind of stop command that's just going to stop our motor so this is built into uh, that differential drive as well that's going to stop it so these are all methods um, from within that differential drive class okay so we're just going to call those and take a closer look at those uh, on your own time so that's all we need within our drivetrain next thing i'm going to say that we probably should do uh, we should probably save up. Let's take a look at creating a command that helps this thing function, helps this um, drive with joysticks function. I'm not sure why this um, error is here right now, but I think it's going to go away. I think that is just a pop-up from uh, Visual Studio Code maybe not keeping up to me. Uh, even if I quickly go here and just build robot code, I'm hoping that that's just going to disappear. Uh, that's actually a good thing to know is just that we build up here and then we also deploy up there on the, with those three dots. Yeah, I got rid of that warning. So we're okay. So let's move on. Uh, let's take a look at subsystems. So same kind of thing, or sorry, we created a subsystem called drivetrain. Let's create a command that matches this function here, drive with joystick. So I'm going to right click on uh, commands. I'm going to create a new command. And so it's of the type new, so command in brackets new. And we're going to name this almost the same as the actual method that it's going to control the life cycle of. So I'm going to call this drive with joysticks. And the main difference that I have between the actual method here and the class that's going to run it, the command class that's going to run it, is I just have a capo at the front. But it's good to match things up like that. And then we always know, well, what the heck does that command control? Well, it controls that method. So I'm going to click Enter. And you can see that we've created a new command. It, it actually extends command base, or here it's from command base. And with that, it has some built-in methods. And these are important. Uh, the main ones that are important, well, we've got a constructor. But beyond that, we have this initialize, which is going to run once. Okay, and when you're, this command is initialized, it's going to run once. And then execute method, it's going to run every single time or run continually um, once that command is called until that command is finished down here or interrupted. And so that makes sense. It's a pretty typical pattern to have a method that runs once, kind of a setup method or a run once method, and then a continual loop, looping method, which is execute. So um, what we're actually going to do here is I'm going to grab, and this is, and I'm going to call on, let's just set up, actually, let's just set up the constructors for this um, command uh, first. So let's pop into a code. I'm going to pick back over to this drive with joysticks. Um, well, what do I need to declare? Well, first of all, it's going to require that drivetrain. Let's get that set up. Pop over here. Um, inside just at the start of the class here I'm going to just put in a drivetrain we're going to do the quick quick fix we get the libraries we need okay that's good um, now I need to actually initialize that um, so I'm going to grab the code for that I'm actually going to steal this whole constructor because it actually takes in an argument now and I'm just going to replace this constructor with that code you can see the difference there is that now it takes in a drivetrain argument. 
uh, called DT, and we're going to set drivetrain equals DT, and then we're going to add the requirements drivetrain. So those things need to be done in there. I'm not going to go into why uh, we need to use that constructor right now, but just know that's what needs to happen. Uh, I'm going to plop back over to uh, drivetrain, and you can see, well, we want this to be something that happens all the time. We want to be able to always control our robot in teleop, and so we want it to continually read our joystick. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab and call that method from our drivetrain inside the execute method of our drive with joysticks command. So we're not going to do anything inside the initialize. You can see I have a couple things here that are that are kind of important. We have a robot container driver joystick. Okay, that we have not initialized yet. We're going to do that in a minute. I'm just going to actually leave that error for a minute. I don't want it to do too much for me. And then this constants drivetrain speed is going to be that speed uh, limiter or buffer um, that we're going to use to kind of tune our drivetrain. Uh, oftentimes, um, the robot might be moving too fast, so you want to give it, say, 50% power so you'd set that speed variable to 0 0.5. So we are going to do this. We're going to add that constants import constants uh, that's good and then we should get that oh I need to create that actual constant value quick fix create constant drive train speed and type constants I'm going to do that it's going to know that that is going to be um, of the type double pop into there really quickly we have that drive train speed zero is not going to be good so I'm going to set it to say maybe 70 percent 0.7 our power is good back to that drive with joysticks okay and then we're gonna go in we, we actually can do this first fix here quick fix import robot container but it's gonna generate a little error here but we're gonna handle all the stuff inside robot container in a minute um, so let's just kind of let's move on to that next step there this is gonna be kind of all we need to have inside that drive with joysticks command we'll fix this problem in uh, robot container.